See. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> what is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're doing Project Runway, workshop style. That's right, we turned a 90s office space into a DIY workshop because this week, we're hosting our very first one for friends and family. This is the front room. As soon as you come into our space, this is the first room that you walk into. And as you can see, it was definitely decorated as a 90s office space, complete with blue carpet tiles and gray walls. It can't get any more boring than this. It was actually a little rascal showroom. Step one, tear it down. So we were removing all of the carpet tiles. These had adhesive on the back, so they were pretty easy to peel up. We did the old Tom Sawyer on the kids and tricked them into removing the tiles for us. We did, we told them how fun it was. And any of the glue and schmutz that was left over, we just used a chisel to scrape it up off of the floor. Actually, they used the chisel to scrape it up off of the floor. <laughs> Step two. Replace the floor. We're using vinyl plank flooring here. This is Style Selections Barnwood Plank Tiles. It's peel and stick. They're just like giant stickers. But I did have to start in the center and try to get all my staggering correct so that again, I could Tom Sawyer the kids into helping out lay the floor. And you see me in most of this video because the boys would only tile in the middle of the floor. When they got towards the wall, I had the hard job of measuring the remaining tile piece that needed to be cut and stuck. But you know what? It was super easy. You use an X-Acto knife and uh, what Just is that? Just kind of score it. Yeah. And score it and snap it. It's super simple. We did this in about uh, one day's time. We did it the first, second half of one day and the first half of the next day. Yeah, uh, well that's only because there was a very long lunch in between. Yeah, there was a long <laughs> look at Look at how it automatically brings so much life to this space just with the new flooring. I mean, you can hardly hate the gray walls at this point because they match pretty good with the floor. I mean, it really brightened it up, but then there's a, one heck of an echo now. Step three, time to do the walls. Now, we are leasing this space, so we were a little nervous to add some brick to directly to the wall or add some shiplap directly to the wall uh, because we know that when we do move, we're gonna have to tear it down and put everything back the way it was. So we chose to use this paneling that looks like shiplap boards. Well, it looks like barn barnwood door. Yeah, it looks yeah. like barnwood planks, but it's really only like eighth inch thick. Same with brick, it's only like eighth inch thick. And it looks pretty brick-like. Yeah, I mean, if I really wanted a brick wall, I, I think that, that that looks pretty cool. Yeah. But the, even the kids looked at it and said, well, I don't know about the brick. Well, they they didn't know we had big plans for this brick. But we got the paneling up and... Yeah. So I laid the panel up and I just hit it with a one inch brad, the nail, not the guy, to hold it in place. And then I strategically placed a couple of drywall screws. I put them in the knots and in the cracks, tried to hide them. He did a great job hiding them. I'll tell you, if you ever have to nail paneling up like this, find the knots in the wood and he put the screw right in there and you couldn't even see them. I painted the screw head the same color. Yeah, you couldn't even see it. You back about two feet away, maybe it's just my eyes, but couldn't even see it. He couldn't. Step four, Add the German schmear. Now, this was our plan all along. We were never gonna leave the brick here, but we did wanna make it that whitewashed look. So we covered the brick paneling with pre-mixed mortar. mortar. Yeah, yep. with tile mastic. It's pre-mixed mortar. Yeah. It's over there and in the tile section. And you'll see the buckets we have here. It took two buckets to complete this job, and it looks it looks great. We used plastic putty knives to apply it, and we tried to get it in where the cement would be, I guess, the black parts, really cover the up mortar. the black parts, and kind of expose some of the bricks. And the tricky part was trying to hide the seam without looking like we were trying to hide the seam. Those plastic putty knives seemed to work great. We just scooped it on the knife and then scraped it against the brick, and you know, the hard the pressure that you put on it, the more exposed the brick was, the lighter pressure, the more mortar you had. And to do these three panels, it did take every ounce of the two gallons of the pre-mixed mortar. Yeah, here this last panel, you'll see my job at the end was to see how much mortar I could get out of that bucket. And then even went back to the first bucket to scrape out what I could. She put some gloves on and was using her hand to try to get every 
eat ounce of that stuff <laughs> I out. I did. But look, we finished it. Garrett went to the top, scraped off a little, and added it to the bottom. So two buckets, three panels. Three panels. And she's giving a little sponge bath. At the end, I went back with a wet sponge, and anywhere where the scraper trowel scratched maybe the mortar a little bit, I used the sponge to level that out, smooth it out. Take out those rough edges kind of make it look a little more worn and not fresh. That's right. And anywhere where the mortar was too thick, this also washed out some of that a little bit. bit. So if it, it was too piled up in one area, I could wash it with the sponge. And once we got the German schmear up, we noticed that the uh, gray paneling, the gray barnwood paneling looked yeah. really dark then, really dark. Well, it was whitewashed paneling and I thought that would be perfect for this space, but it still looked dark after we put the white sh schmear on there. So Garrett's bright idea, which was perfect. It worked out. He did a whitewash in the paint. So we just had some water in the bottom of the bucket, added a little paint, it was super thin. We just put the sponge in there and wiped the whole wall with the sponge and it gave it this nice, extra white look to it. It also gave my hands an extra coating of paint gloves. I didn't wear gloves. I tried to get him to wear the gloves. I thought it was watery and it would wash right off. It did not. I had gloves for like the whole night. White gloves. Yeah, it was like, I felt like Mickey Mouse. Step six, add the trim. So now we have our paneling on the walls. The walls are nine feet and our paneling is eight feet. So we purposely added some color to the top. You'll see we added a little blue up there. And then we put this white trim to cap the top and the bottom. So it looks framed. It gives a more of a farmhouse look. Yeah, we just used some one by fives and painted them white. And then at the top and bottom, we tried to find the studs so they would actually kind of hold the panels in place too, not just my strategic screws. Um, because this is a commercial space, those studs are metal studs, but he was able to use those drywall screws and get right through the wood yeah. and into the metal stud. You can really tell where it was attached to the wall, very strong. Yeah. And then for the side panels, as we as we brought those together and covered those up with a piece of trim, we used the Just a little classic... bit of that classic Gorilla Glue, yeah. And then a couple of brad nails to hold it until the Gorilla Glue would take hold. But we figured we'd be able to chip that off or just break it off when we take those panels off. Step seven, add some shelving. Well, we made some rope shelves. We have a video, a whole video about how we made the rope shelves. We did that one last week. And then we made a couple of paint shelves, eight paint shelves. Again, we used some one by fives and a one by two, just pin them together with a one and a quarter inch brad, the nail, not the guy, and then uh, hung them on the wall with some L brackets. Step eight, make the workshop tables. Gotta have a place to sit and work. Yeah, gotta have a place to take a nap. <laughs> I'll probably find him out there one day out there on the tables. I'll totally be taking a nap on the table. We used some plans from Shanty to Chic. These were workbench tables. The only change we made to these plans is we didn't cut the tops down to fit the tables exactly. We left the four by eight sheet of three quarter inch MDF and it leaves an overhang so folks can slide up and put their knees under the table. Yeah, there's like a 12 inch overhang on the sides. I guess. And then a six and a half inch overhang on the sides ends. as well. Ends. I don't know which <laughs> are the ends and which are the sides. I had to make four of these workshop tables. So again, I Tom Sawyered our, our kids into helping me out. And we threw a couple of them together and then I had to take a break midway through to go do a live with Kim. On Tuesday, yeah, <laughs> Tuesday live. If you look inside the door there, you can see, you might be able to glimpse us standing there talking to the camera. Now it took me just as long to cut all the wood as it did to just assemble everything. Uh, these were super easy. I made all four in about eight hours. It was a simple frame at the bottom, some a two by four and two by six legs, and then a frame at the top. I centered each top, put a pilot hole, about eight pilot holes around the top, added a drywall screw just to hold it in place. I don't think anybody will be picking these up by the tops, but I don't want it to slide around. Well, and we plan to put craft paper over each of these tables for each workshop like we do with our uh, filming studio space. We add that white paper onto our desktop every time. We plan to do the same out here and that way folks can get stained, get paint on them, and hopefully we'll keep the tables looking nice. Keep them crisp and clean. For a little while anyway. Gotta make it, gotta keep <laughs> it looking like a hospital. 
like a farmhouse hospital. Step nine, add a sign. Always be branding. <laughs> we gotta label our space. We cut this on the large laser. This is 48 inches wide and... 20 inches tall. We painted this just like we would paint any door around. It was a very simple sign to make. And used our regular Starbond thick to glue it together. But we did leave off the M, E, and the T. And then we used those spaces to put some drywall screws in and attach it to the wall. Then we glued the letters back on, kind of hide the screws. Can't even how tell. Is it, how is it hanging there? How is it even up there? It's magic. <laughs> Step 10. Now we have the accents. This was the funnest part of the whole project because it really brought the space together. We added paint on the paint shelves. We brought in some of the old projects from our previous videos, hung those on the wall to give it that farmhouse decor. We added all of the spring and summer signs to the rope shelves to give it options for new projects and new ideas for the next time you want to come in for a workshop. It's looking inviting. So what do you think? Do you like what we've done with the place? It doesn't look so grungy in 50s anymore. What was your favorite part this week? Is it the tables? Do you notice any of your favorite videos on the back wall here? We tried to use some old video stuff. How far away do you live? You enjoyed us What kind of car now? do you drive? Do you get good miles per compared <laughs> to the gallon? You can come see us. Oh, a big thank you to the patrons. But it looks like we're about out of time. So unless you're joining us for the patron after show, we'll see you next week, where we do it, build it, and make it again. Let's see how this goes, Kim. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! whoa.